Okay, so we're going to go in three, two, one. Lions Lounge Lockdown, episode 47, Louis McCarthy Scarsbrook. Thanks for joining us, mate. Hello, brother. You all right? Good. Thanks for having me. Very, very pleased to have you on, mate. Very pleased to have you on. You ain't lost your accent after being up there for so long? No, no, yeah, nearly 11 years. Still going strong. I think if I did, then my old man might uh, might kick me ass. But no, yeah, that's all right. But the, kid, the kids are, are swaying. I've got like, uh, some kids there swaying. They, sometimes they turn into mank, brummy. It works his way down. I, mean. <laughs> I was going to talk to you about that later. Try and get him, get him back down when you finish rugby. Get him back down quick before it goes completely. That's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is a little series, a little spin-off from obviously we usually interview ex-players, ex-managers of the club, but this one's called uh, one, one of Our Own. Obviously, for those that don't know, born in Whitechapel, 1986, grew up in the Isle of Dogs. Yeah, London Hospital, yeah, 1986, many, many moons ago, before I had all this grey air and all this lockdown air, yeah, so uh, <laughs> many moons ago, yeah, growing up, growing up in the Isle of Dogs, uh, yeah, yeah, just, just, just an East London boy, really. Roaming yeah. the streets. <laughs> no, I mean, a lot, a lot of Mill, all, all Millwall fans will know, but for those who don't know, I think East London are supporting Mill. It's from where Millwall originated from, East London. And you, you grew up playing in some of them original locations, didn't you? Yes, yeah. So, got in, uh, well, next to uh, Millwall Park. So, like, so like mud shoot, like mud shoot area. So, right near yeah. there. So, grew up there playing for uh, uh, my first football team, which was Millwall Albion, and we were like we were like the Brazil of uh, of East London. I think we were, we were very good. <laughs> if I say so myself, but I was just a keeper. So that's uh, oh, was your keeper. I was, was going to ask like, you. I was a goalkeeper. Yeah, goalkeeper. So yeah, I filled the goal. So it was all right. <laughs> was, you big, was you a big lump even back then? A big, big. Yeah, it was a big lump back then. Yeah. So uh, used to used to every now and then, if we were uh, tonking a the team, they let me uh, run out and uh, try and score a goal. So. You yeah. ended up scoring it with a belly, so it was all right. So. <laughs> well, mate, you ain't got a belly. I've still got the belly, and I was a goalkeeper. You've, I, put a, <laughs> I put a picture up on social media of you holding up the, the, the trophy for winning for um, yeah. St. Ellen's, and a few boys went, fuck me, yeah. you, wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to club off him. So I was an him guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, yeah, that was many moons ago now, so yeah. So, right, yeah. What's the first team you remember watching as, as, a, as a young Millwall fan? Oh, probably a first team... I remember watching it would probably be uh, oh, back in the day like Lucas Neal and all that. It was like years and years ago, right? Mm. So it's like back, 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 back then. So yeah, it was like it was, it was. It's just you wanted to go and play down there and just go with your mates down there. So it was like it was class and all that. But the memories that I have are watching. I think it's like Tim Cahill, Aris, yeah. Uh, uh, I filled, and it was like it's like back back then, yeah. So yeah, that's not the memories I have of watching them. Yeah, because Lucas uh, Neal yeah. Lucas Neal was actually there before a lot of them, but didn't come into his own. So, yeah, so in, in, he come into that group as well with like, I feel Kyle. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Mate. Yeah, you said you used to get free yeah, tickets. Good, yeah? good team to watch. Yeah, so it was like lucky enough. Like I said, I played for Mill Album and used to get tickets this that to us. So it was it weren't too bad. He used to go down there with the. With the with the coaching team and all that, so it was, it was just like a nice day out, and he just mucking around with your friends, really, mm. uh, drinking drinking all all fizzy drinks and everything. So you're, just, <laughs> you're off, off your trade, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you said you was the um the Brazil of East London. Was you any good then as a team, and you individually as a player? Me, me I was. Uh, well, I had one of my mates. Uh, he he, he, uh, he Instagram me going. Are you on the line, lines, lines? And I went, yeah, yeah. The, the, he called me up for some reason. He went, oh, yeah, he went, yeah, get on it. Went, Remember to tell him that you were the cat. And I went, yeah, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll tell him that. So, no, that's for, no, that's for Sam. So, uh, yeah, he reminded me that. And but you know, I was just I was a goalkeeper, so I didn't really have to do much because, like I said, they were the Brazil of yeah, East London. Yeah. So I sat, I sat leaning against the post, eating packets of crisps and sweets usually, but. Uh, when it when it come to it, I could pull out a good save every now and then. So that was all right. Yeah. Quality, mate. Quality. So what I'm trying to lead to is, I mean, I've looked on a little bit of research, and is, am I right in saying that when at 16 years old you went for rugby trials, you never actually really played rugby? No, 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 never played rugby. Never, never, never touched the rugby ball till I was like, yeah, 15, 16. So it was, uh, it was lucky. So I grew up in East London and the Isle of Dogs. Yeah. I had to go to uh, school. Uh, St. Joseph's Academy in Lewisham. So I had to travel all the way to, through to Lewisham up to Blackheath to, to go to St. Joseph's Academy. And uh, obviously, it wasn't one of the best, it's still not, it's not even there now. So it wasn't one of the best schools, but one of the teachers were in there saying, 
you're a big lad. Uh, why don't you go and try a trial? So three of us went down. My mate, Mike, 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 Mike Warrantsy, his brother, Rob. Uh, we went down there and uh, and we got bitten by the bug then. So it was just one of them ones. It was, uh, it was enjoyable. I could use my size to have some fun, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. It's a mad one. I, think, I reflect on, on my thing a little bit. I was, I was a big lump, still am, as you can see, a goalkeeper as well. And we exactly the same sort of thing happened. A, rug, a geezer come into our school, Northern teacher, but we need a rugby team. So obviously a few big lumps. We started a rugby team and we used to, and I want to get onto this as well, the sort of, it's a completely different breed really. I, I, in my opinion, rugby teams to Millwall, diff, uh, sorry, rugby to football, it's different banter, it's different everything. But when I was a kid, the, the, the clubs that played, the schools that played were like private schools. So we would go and play Dulwich College, Colfs, you remember them sort of teams? Rugby, rugby schools, you know what I mean? No, yeah, no, see, like, think I, yeah, that's union. So I completely missed that. Right. I had no idea. I had no idea with that. And then, um, so I went, went, done trials for that, uh, for, for Broncos. It was like London and the South. It was like they wanted, wanted us to make like a regional team. So mm. we used to go up north to play all the rest of them up here. So like Yorkshire, Lancashire, Cumbria and all that. And we just held our own. We were just full of, full of rough kids from East London, South London, West London, all meeting up on a train, going up there. So it, it was it was different, like. So we, yeah, we didn't really meet like the tops, as you say. We didn't really yeah, that's what I was getting at. Yeah. Uh, until I got later, until I got like, later on, and then one of my mates uh, used to, went to sixth form, and he had a sevens team. So I used to skip my school to go over to his school to play for them and play sevens. So it was like it was like that. And uh, the funny story was the teacher used to make him ring me to go over there to skip my school to go and play sevens for him. <laughs> That like, is just like one of them things. Back in, you wouldn't get away with it now, but back in the day, you get away with anything. Yeah, you could, mate. That's, that's just mad, but you just, from nowhere, never never, never touched the rugby ball, and then all of a sudden, you just have that natural talent for it. Do you think your movement yeah. as a goalkeeper helps you out a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, cat life re reflexes, no. I don't know, yeah, I don't know. Probably hand-eye coordination might help that, but yeah, no. I think my size helped me out in the, in the, in the first step, and then... Because I didn't really take it seriously. It was just a way of getting a 50 quid a win. If you got 50 quid a win, you'd go and buy a new pair of trainers. So that was that was my that was my goal in life, to go get a new pair of trainers after we won. <laughs> so that we done all right. But uh, it was it, it was one of them things. And then obviously later on in my life, I started taking it more seriously. Because it was just it was just a muck around with my mates, really. Yeah, just one of them for like, like, like a little relief. So we used like 16 years old at this point, the first time you ever played. So you must have just been leaving school. What was your plans after? Like, yeah. What was your plans originally? Did you have any plans or? No, it was just, it was always just get a trade. I think my old man said to me, as long as you got a trade, you'll be all right. So yeah. uh, I started, started doing that. And luckily enough, I'd, I'd done it up here. I'd done like a three year like night course and I've got my plumbing degree behind me up here. So it's not too bad. I've always got something to fall back on. Uh, but that's, mm -hmm. that's how I've been drained really. Just get something behind you. Because if you don't work that, you're thinking, but luckily enough, it's worked out. But yeah, you mate. still need to still need to pay the bills after it's all gone. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, eleven eleven years later, you're still there. We'll get into that later. Let's talk about obviously, you know, signing signing pro. What is is there similarities between? I mean, what we see as football fans is are clubs or rugby clubs run the same sort of way. Do you get an apprenticeship or a scholarship, or are you straight into pro? No, we were straight. We were we were like. Um, uh, there's like an under 21, so there's like a youth team coming through. And they did London, London Broncos at the time who I was with didn't have uh, like an under 21s. Right. So uh, four of us got shipped out to Hull. So we played played for Hull uh, on loan for a year. So we done pre season with their first team, but played for Hull's 21s. Right. So we won the grand final there with them. Uh, uh, like, 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 like the um, the Premiership. It's like, like you won that. So for, for the under 21. So we won that. We beat. Wigan in the final, and that was that was when I think I had to. I thought to myself, "Oh, that's when I have to start making it serious." So it's not like glitz and glamour where you're going to go and come through the first team and all right, they ship you straight out. So you've got to learn your trade, if you know what I mean, and go out and prove that you can tackle men first of all, and run into men and try and skittle fellas, if you know what I mean. So I think that's a good thing, mate. Yeah, and then that 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 was that was how I learned my trade, and luckily enough, they they called me back. So yeah, and then then we started training with the first team down there. Mm. London Broncos. Was it, wasn't they originally an American football team, London Broncos, that came over? No, no, yeah, that's what everyone said. Everyone, everyone, when I first started, everyone thought I played ice hockey. But no, nah, I don't play ice hockey. No, it's the rugby league. <laughs> but 
No, yeah, Bron- yeah Broncos as well. There is a, there is a, I think there is an NFL team called Broncos, isn't it? Or something like, yeah, but it's, it's from uh, the NRL, which is the, the rugby league in Australia. Yeah. Uh, Brisbane Broncos. So they're, they're, they're the ones, but they used to play at Charlton, played at Fulham, played at Brentford. So they've been everywhere. They've been, yeah. Mm-hmm. Been everywhere now. Now, now I think they're trying to get out of Wimbledon, so they might might make their own Wimbledon. So right. that's right. When you said um, people thought you played ice hockey or American football, whatever, what was your like your family's reaction and your mates from from East London who only only knew football? I mean, it's not really a rugby thing, is it? Like round our way, is it's mm. not really a massive thing. So what was their reaction when you went? I'm going to go and be a rugby pro. Was they like He's lost his head? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, well, it was like me, that, my old man said, "Yeah, do what you want." Like my old man was always behind me. Mum was always behind me. They, they supported me always. So, yeah, can't do it. if you want to do it, go and do it, go and try it. But just remember, get a trade behind you. I was like, all right, so, <laughs> so that's all I got told. Uh, my mates were like, "Where are you going?" I'm like, "Oh, well, I've got to go two hours on a train uh, to Northwest London to to do some training." He went, "Why are you doing that for?" I said, "Oh, it's just rugby." So he's get on the train, meet me mate at London Bridge, and then go from London Bridge to Waterloo and then out. So. Yeah, but yeah. no, it was just one of them ones. It was like, like I said to you, everyone thought I played ice hockey. It was like, nice no, rugby league. So where are you going this week? I oh, was going to Newcastle to play someone. All right, yeah, so that's it. That's yeah, it's, it. It's, a bit, it's a bit of a different route for a boy from East London to take, really, isn't it? Especially one that started out, you know, in, in football. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very different, yeah. Not saying, not saying I did want to be a footballer, but I just wasn't good at it. <laughs> so that's it, yeah. <laughs> Well, I've got a question. I've got a question at the end to ask you about that anyway, but we'll get on to that later. So you 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 start at London Broncos, they then turn to Harley Quinns. Is that right? You did four years as a yeah, pro right. at Harley Quinns. Amazing. I made obviously you made me debut um uh, at Harley Quinns. Uh, I'll never forget that. I made me debut, got beat by Leeds 64 0 So that was always uh edged in my brain. Edged in my brain. So I always uh, I always tell like the youngsters now coming through and making their debut. I go, I go, just enjoy it, take it all in. And you'll never beat my debut. And they go, they go, oh, what happened? Did you score? I'm like, no, I've got to beat 64 0. So that ain't going to happen here because we're a good team. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, it was, yeah. Yeah. It was, ama- it was amazing, though, to make me debut. It was fantastic. And like to do it, to do it and then to, to play down there because it was just like, because there was a lot of Aussies. So it was a, lot, a bit like football, if you know what I mean. They all come in from different countries and all that. Mm. And you have to bond. And that what we had down there was like a core. So, Everyone had to get on with everyone because they knew no one else. So you had to get on with everyone. Everyone's family knew everyone. It was just, it was fantastic. It was a great, it was a great like home from home. Especially like I moved over and uh, we we've been missing now. My wife I moved over there and it was just amazing. But before that, we used to live in houses with boys and all that. So they were they were very good as well. Yeah, this this is what really intrigues me. Like for, my perception is that rugby banter and rugby crack is. They're good boys, but it's completely different to football. Especially you talk exactly like me. You're a Jack the Lad. Like, was it? What is it similar? No, it's it's same. same. Yeah, it's you know, You got. I think you got different, and yeah, you got you got Union, which would be. I can see it being very different Union. Yeah. But then League, League's just League's just like you and me. League's just right. You call everyone UNT. It doesn't matter, <laughs> and it's fine. And. It's, it's it go it's it's easy I think because up here it's northerners they're just working class boys and cool. they know how to get on if you, you come in no one can come in with an haircut and it's a good haircut so it doesn't matter no one can, no one can get dropped off by their missus and no one ruin them it's ridiculous <laughs> no one can get a new car and it'd be the worst car in the world it's just how it is it's just how it is. Yeah, that's a, and another thing I said to you, like I said before we went on, I was honestly said, I don't know loads about rugby. So uh, I know the difference between, the only difference I knew between Union and League was, I'm not just saying it because you played it, League is more exciting because by the fifth tackle, you've got to do something, haven't you? Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, well, you've got you get five tackles, yeah, you get five tackles to do something. And if you ain't done it, then you have to kick it. That's it, the, yeah. Which... The opponents to with Rugby Union, they're kicking it out, it's scrummaging. There's so many laws in Rugby Union. Obviously, it's a yeah. great game to watch because a lot of people watch it, but league, league's just more quick. I think it's more it's more exciting to watch. And if, yeah. if if anything, if you if you didn't think that, just watch last year's grand final that we won. And that just that just make you go, wow, this game's crazy. Because yeah. I think uh, one of the boys got tweeted off um, Tony Bellew afterwards going, that was amazing. I don't know what I'm watching, but this is amazing. So... <laughs> If you watch it, you, you you know you're in it. Yeah, and you're saying it's obviously not just the rules of the fifth tackle and that, but the the whole uh, dynamic of it. It's a lot. It's a lot more working class the rugby league side of the things than rugby union. 
Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not. There's no. Yeah, there's no like thing. Is like, obviously union. Union's been like, union, like I said, just posh boys, isn't it? That's what they say. But uh, like leagues, just 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 ruffians, just trying yeah. to have a, trying to trying to work out for eighty minutes and then go to the pub afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> this is another. The next part I'm going to ask you is obviously in 2010 you leave Harlequins and you join St Helens. Now I've done my research and I'm a bit simple sometimes, so things blow my mind. So as a kid, I remember rugby league was witness. Um, Wigan, St Helens, yeah. Martin, Martin yeah. Chariots of Fire. Remember Martin of Fire? Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember Martin that. Fire, when, yeah. I've, when I've researched it, I couldn't believe that St Helens was in Merseyside. Now, what's that like being yeah. amongst a, a massive football city, being a rugby player? Oh, it's it's, it's, it's well, it's amazing. Obviously, Liverpool's everywhere, and especially was it a year before? Oh, Jesus Christ! It was it was pain living up here when they won everything and they were they were good. But now you don't now you don't hear him, so it's all right. So it's not too yeah, bad. Yeah. But uh luckily enough, luckily enough, me my son, my oldest, uh he like I like I said, yeah, I, I took him to a mill game first of all, but luckily enough, he he decides to choose Man City just because Man City are winning everything yeah. and he's a Man City fan now. So I can't I can't get it out of him and it's it's ridiculous. But <laughs> at least I can say I took him to his first ever game was a Millwall game, so that yeah. was it. But no, it's it's, it's phenomenal. So then it's like right in the middle. And you've got Liverpool one side, you've got Manchester the other side. So it's 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 amazing. It is amazing because Liverpool's a fantastic city. Mm. And St. Helens is a is a great town as well. Oh, so, so it's it's in between the sort of in between between the both. Yeah, it's like it's like the link way between Manchester and uh and, and Liverpool. So it's like literally like if you wanted to go if I'm in if I'm now and like all the boys say, where are we gonna go at? We're gonna go to Liverpool, we're gonna go to Manchester. I'll always say Liverpool because Liverpool's my type of thing. Manchester you get lost around there. It's like London. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's St Helens like as a club? Talk to us a bit about your club. You've been there eleven years nearly now. So, oh, yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic club. I think it was uh, it, back then. It was one of them decisions where I sat down, I had to think to myself: Do I want to leave? Do I want to leave? Home? Do I want to leave what I know to come up here? And I think I left. I left uh, down there. Uh, as a young 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 man with, with, with my missus, and we come up here, and uh, it's been it's been fantastic. The club took us in, fa- like, helped me find an ass. It's a fantastic club to be in. I think when you play when you play for a club, and obviously when you're doing well, like we have, like last couple of years, it's it's a great place to be. But all the all the fans are fantastic. Like I can walk around Tesco, and everyone says, "All right, Luke, all right, Luke." They always find me down the chocolate aisle all the time, it drives me up the wall, but. Uh, they always go to me, hey, again, I go, yeah, it's fantastic. Bro. As train, as a new manager, as the new players, it's, it's, mm. it's class. You go, it's just, it's just a, a nice town and a nice place to be. If you know what I mean? Is it, is it fair to say, from what you're saying there, it's, it's nice the level you've got of respect from the fans, but it's not, it's not too much like it can be for footballers when they can't fucking leave the house and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? Is it a nice? Yeah, no, nice... oh no, yeah, no. yeah, like I can, I can quite easily go to a pub and. And get get mangled and still find me way home and it and obviously it won't be no pictures anyway. If you know what I mean, like that's a totally different level of footballer. You know what I mean? It's ridiculous, but um, yeah, it's yeah, it's totally, it's totally yeah, but it's just, it's just, it's class. I think because it's up north, it's just working town as well, so mm. they're not all in your face. It's just, you're like you can walk down the road. I walk the dog and I walk down the road. I go right, yeah. Even though my dog's trying to rip their, their head off because it's the angriest dog in the world. It's like they can you all right? Go, yeah, yeah, sweet, yeah, it's fine, yeah. But yeah, it's, everyone, everyone's got time of day for you, and it's fantastic. Yeah. You said about that move to, uh, to St Helens. So how, how does that work? Is it do you have an agent? Is it is it like similar to football again, or is it completely just get it done yourself sort of thing? Well, yeah, there's not obviously like they're not like the old transfer market and all that. There's none of no like big big money moves, if you know what I mean. I think I was coming to the end of my contract, so uh, it was it was one of them. Uh, one uh, my coach at the time was moving to another club, uh, and I would obviously thought he he done wonders for me. He got me into shape, he got playing playing well, and how I wanted to do, how I wanted to be, if you know what I mean. So he was going to another club. Uh, and then I was like, right, we'll I have to start looking. So I spoke to one of the, the senior players at the time. Um, what, what do you think I should do? And he said, just speak to me agent and see what's out there for you. So all clubs come in for me and thinking for me. And I met up with the chairman, Eamon Manis from, from St. Helens, who's still here now, doing a fantastic job here. And uh, I just got on well with him. I just got like, I just had a, just had like a nice vibe off him. And mm. some people I met, I felt a bit, oh, a bit shady, a bit, bit, 
a bit or not too sure. But uh, I, I met Eamon and it just clicked straight away. And it was it was a it was a it was a no brainer really to go up there and try and win things. And mm. uh, and that's what I've done. So yeah, it was no brainer. See about you know St Helens. You said it's in between the two the two towns. I'll, I'll point to Wigan. Wigan got in the Premier League, didn't they? And they had still had no real fans because it's a predominantly a rugby town. With St Helens, is there you know within your dressing room as well teammates and fans? Are they sort of into football also, or is it? Are you like a, a, a sort of a rare breed being being a, being a no no no. Yeah, no no no. I think I think they're all into football. I got uh, obviously one of the boys. One of the boys, or two of the boys, two, uh, two of the boys is a Wigan, a Wigan, or he go, used to go, uh, Jack Wellsby. Uh, he, he goes, um, Wigan home and away. He loves it. He loves it. He follow, follows him when he, when he, when he could, when he was young. Obviously, now, now we're playing rugby, he can't, but yeah. usually his mates ring him up and go, come, we're going. And he'll just go. And I've got uh, another fellow who plays with us, Joe Batch, uh, who's a uh, Huddersfield Tan. Uh, fans, so I'm just giving him stuff all the time. Every time they're on telly, filming them going, "We're tired of falling apart." <laughs> yeah, love it. He just he, uh, he hates it, and I go into him. But no, there's there's so many. There's obviously uh, Man United fans. Uh, one of my good mates here, Carl Amor, he's a Liverpool fan. Luckily enough, he gets tickets to go into the box and all that. So yeah, there's there's many 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 football fans here who love it. So yeah, they're, they're Everyone loves football. It's just football, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think it's safe to say you're probably the only Mill fan up there, aren't you? What's What's people's reaction? When yes, yeah, you're yeah. Mill fan. Yeah, you, well, usually when the new Aussies come over, so we've had three new Aussies coming over recently, and they're like, they're like, like I talk to them and all that, and they go, they go, are you full of football? I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, they go, oh, what team do you support? I go, Mill, and they go, who like? That? They ain't got a clue. They're from Australia, ain't got a clue. So I, like, yeah, I'm like, oh, they're, they're in underneath the uh, the Premiership. They're like, he's like. I follow him. I'm like, yeah, follow him. And then they come back to me like two days later. And go, no, 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 I'm following Liverpool. <laughs> Are you sure I get a few few Aussies on board to join join the gang? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, trying to, but yeah, failing at the moment. So that's all right. Let's talk a bit about your career since joining St Helens. You've got a record of stadiums that any footballer would be proud of: Old Trafford, Wembley. You've, you've played at yeah. all. Yeah, you've played at them all. Yeah, played. Yeah. Played at them all, and yeah, luck, luckily enough, yeah, like Wembley, Old Trafford, Old Trafford uh, four times, Old Trafford, so I played there. Uh, St James's, Anfield, uh, Man City Stadium, yeah. So yeah, so it's been, it's been yeah, been every like every footballer's dream really to go around and play at stadiums. I, I love it, so it's been fantastic. Played at, uh, we played like a magic weekend where all the clubs get together and play over a weekend. Uh, which is a fantastic festival, and that's like that was at um, St James's Park, and uh, one of me one of my good mates here, Alex Wormsley, he's like a Newcastle fan. Right. So we we won that game, and we won it quite quite well. And uh, he goes, "Let me take a penalty here with a rugby ball." I went, "All right, yeah, sweet, yeah, I'll take a penalty, like save it." And just before he took it, I went, "You know, I'm going to save this because he wanted to do Shearer. He wanted to do a Shearer." <laughs> so he put it. He, uh, he's not he's not the best. He's about six foot eight. And he's not, he's a big big long giraffe thing. So he, he his foot coordination is not the best. But he did actually put it in the bottom corner. But I got to it and saved it, and I ran off doing the shearer. You know, he'd never forgive me for that. He's never forgiven me. Six foot. Yeah. Actually, you're a big lump. You're six. You're six two, aren't you? Yeah, six two. Yeah, six two. Yeah, six two and a bit. Yeah, I'll give that. <laughs> yeah, <so>. In heels. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, like fucking some, some, like you just said six eight. Somebody, somebody. You're you're not. You wouldn't be classed as an absolute. Big lump, would you in rugby compared to say say six foot eighters? No, yeah, we got we got some big lads, big lads, here, yes, big tall lads. So we got obviously our we got Dan Norman. He must be six foot nine, something like that. He's ridiculous, dude. And he's like he's built like a brick shit house as well. He's like fucking like that. He's massive, yeah. He's massive. Do you find that, like some of the big yeah. lumps are still like agile? Do you know what I mean? You can still get about obviously get about the pitch. Or... Yeah, exactly. When we have to do like wrestling and tackle technique, I find myself finding the little ones now. So that's right. <laughs> I just go, oh, come here, you, you, you do. Yeah, I mean, for everything that I've said about rugby earlier, rugby union, obviously the toffs, the posh kids, one thing you've got to say for rugby players, whichever it's union or it's league, you've got to take your hat off to them because footballers nowadays just love to roll around the floor, don't they? But you boys can fucking have it and just keep getting up and getting up. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, they, yeah but both, yeah, like, like union, like scrummaging and that, like in the morning, yeah, I ain't, I ain't doing that. Me is as bad as they are now, but imagine, imagine I was doing that, yeah. 
But no, yeah, we do we do put our bodies through it. But I, I say that all the time. If I was worth 100 million, I'd be rolling around on the floor as well. So yeah, <laughs> it true. doesn't matter to me. Yeah, that's the thing, <laughs> though. Like, the, money, the money in football is sort of, it's killed it a bit. And now, like I say, they're like, not just on the pitch where they love a roll around, but they can't, like you say, they can't go to a pub and get pissed and walk down the street. So you're, you're in yeah. a good position. You're in a good position. So you're well thought of up there. If you could pick like standout yeah. memories of your time at St. Helens. Could you pick like... Oh, standout memories. Uh, probably, it will probably be the, the, probably the standout memory is probably the first grand final we won, which was back in 2014. So we won the grand final then, which is like, obviously like winning the Premier League. Um, but it's like a playoff system, so you have to go through the playoffs. So you win, you win the league, you get a league leader shield, and then you have to play everyone in in below you or to, to win the grand final. And lucky enough, we've done that. Uh, yeah, that's probably a stand out, a stand out moment. I think that was just fantastic. And people go, "Oh, do you remember it?" And I go, "I don't remember it because it just went like that." Yeah. It was like one of them things where it's just it's just gone. And I remember that we won. But yeah, it was a fantastic experience to obviously win it. And luckily enough, I've won it another two times since then. So yeah, so we've done all right. Boy, mate, you've had a really good career. So, you've been there, what is it, 11 years now, and 300 appearances around about that? Yeah, I think it's just shy. Yeah, just shy. I think, yeah, I think I'm just just shy of 300. I think I'm just shy of 400 all appearances. So, uh, put together for Quins and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, people keep telling me, going, oh, you're nearly at 300. I'm like, oh, yeah. So, yeah. so, what you, so I'm, I'm lucky start, enough, yeah. You just started the new season as well, haven't you? Yeah, just started. Yeah, we played um, we played Salford uh, Friday night. Friday night last no, well, not last night. Friday night ago. So yeah, so we started off with a win. So that was a good good performance for us. Obviously, got stuff to work on and, and get better. It's just playing off the cobwebs, really. We've had one preseason friendly due to COVID as well. There's no fans or nothing like that. So you just got to get yourself up for these games. And the boys are the, luckily enough. We've had a long, had quite a long preseason this one. Usually. Usually it's like a six weeker, but we've had like an eight, eight, nine weeker. So it's been. It's, I think everyone just wants to get back playing, really. But yeah, like I said to you just before the start, I'm, I'm still sore. <laughs> <laughs> <It's stupid. laughs> well, mate, you done with 35 years old, still doing well, mate. You still look, you look really well for it. But yeah, um, yeah. I see a couple of photos, by the way, on, uh, on Google when I had a look. We had the big years ago. You had the big long barney and a big beard. That looked decent. Yes. You should get it yeah, back on board. Uh, Big, big long hair. Well, it's going now. This is what's well, since COVID. I still not had it cut. Yeah, everyone's going. Oh, is he growing it back? I'm like, no, I'm not growing it back. I look like an absolute tramp. I was like, no, you must be mad. <laughs> Midlife crisis back then. I think I don't know why I did it. <laughs> but yeah, it went down to about there. Uh, look decent, was, mate. Gonna, I'll put a picture on the screen now. Yeah. But you talked about COVID there. Has it really affected you as a, as a as a player, as a club? Similar to football in a lot of ways, <sighs> I suppose. Well, it was yeah. Obviously, it was hard. I think. Um, I think when it come in, I think everyone everyone thought it'd just be a two week thing, and yeah. we'll get over it. We'll get over it and do it like that. But obviously, a year on, it's uh, it's it's took obviously detriment to on our sport. I think because rugby league survives on fans and ticket sales and merchandise and drinking money, beer money, and all that, mm. and putting stuff into town. If you know what I mean. So I think the, the, the town and rugby league in general has been it. But obviously, like as a sport, we we took pay cuts just to keep keep the club club afloat and all that. Mm. So we've, we've, we've done, we've done our bit and obviously playing in front of no fans uh, was hard at first. I think it took some getting used to, I think you were like, cause you could just hear everyone talking. So it was like a yeah. training session, if you know what I mean. But it's uh, it, it, now, right now I think it's, it's starting to come and all. So when fans start coming back, I think we'll all go, can everyone be quiet? Cause you can't <laughs> hear everything. <laughs> you got to try and re readjust to that again, ain't you? Your, your uh, stadium, what's it old? What sort of crowd you getting? I think it is. I think I think the capacity is like eighteen thousand. I think I think the capacity is eighteen thousand because because they've got two sides, uh, two sides that are standing. So like two either ends are standing. So the away end and the, one of the home ends is standing. So yeah. it's just it's it's like and then seating and seating and boxes. So it's a it's a it's a fantastic stadium to be in and it's, it's Saint Stadium as well. So it's just, it's amazing. Talking about as well, like you say. Are you coming to the end of your career, sort of now at 35? Is that for a rugby player? Is well, that yeah. sort of normal, normal age? You, you try, you, you roll on, you roll on years. So you go, you roll on that. So you're in like one year contracts and all that. So you just have to see how your body is. But, but like I said to you, I started later. I started later. I only started rugby when I was 16. So I haven't got that that young mileage in my, le in my, leg, so, in my legs. Sorry. So hopefully I'll go a little bit, 
get a little bit longer because mm. I'm still I'm still feeling fit. I'm still feeling fast. I'm still feeling strong. So as long as I feel like that and I don't feel like oh my god, I, I need to stop now. Like, I'm feeling like I'm. I'm, I'm losing the plot or like I'm not quick enough, I'm not strong enough, then I know to myself that it's, it's time to hang up the boots and try and get in the real world. <laughs> <laughs> what are the boots like? Let's talk about the boots. What are they like? Are they like football boots, very similar? Oh, I know, yeah. L- luckily enough, I've got a mate uh, at Mizuno, so I'll, I'll get Mizuno boots. So um, uh, he, he hooks me up, so I'll get like, the, the nice Mizuno boots. So it's like pro- football boots. They're all, all the boys wear football boots. It's all football boots. There's no like... Yeah, it's no, there's no, yeah, because it's not like Union where you have to do the, the, the scrummaging and all that. So everyone's wearing moulds or or little studs and hybrids and all that. So yeah, mine are, mine are Mizuno, but the, uh, that a footballer would wear. They're they're right. fantastic. They are, and obviously there's Nikes, the the uh, Ronaldo, the Messi's. Everyone's got all them ones and the Tempo. So yeah, there's some. Some bright boots in this game, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, I can't deal with some of the boots <laughs> in the footballers. But if you rugby boys are wearing them, and it's all right by me. But um, yeah, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to draw my comparisons from football, obviously, to rugby. So another thing I was going to ask was, you know, footballers come out, they finish football at, say, 30, 35, and then there's a, there's a big opportunity for them to get into media or, or, or coaching. Is, is the same sort of options there for rugby players? And what's your thoughts, if any, going, going outside of the game once you finish playing? I think obviously you get outside the game. I think there there, there is opportunities. There was obviously to get there to get into the, try and get into the media. If you if you can talk and you sound all right and you're you're, you're knowledgeable about the game, then I think it's quite easy to get into the game and uh, and and go down that route with, with with rugby league commentary because I think we're crying out for people to to put their bit in, especially players that are retiring now. Mm. Uh, put their put their bit in so they know they've just left and they can go well this is why they're doing this this is why they're doing that if you know what I mean but yeah also you can stay in the game I think uh, one of our assistant coach Paul Wellens is an absolute legend if you, if you know rugby league he's an absolute legend he's won everything he's, he's done everything uh, Great Britain England everything like that uh, avid uh, Man City fan he goes home and away if he can uh, but he's he's in the assistant coach role now so he's Worked his way up. He's, he's England assistant as well. So yeah, there's opportunities there for you. I think you just got to get the qualifications behind you. And uh, like I said, you know how to put yourself across to the media and all that. It's probably which I which I struggle with because I swear too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm on YouTube and not on telly. That's what I tell myself anyway. Yeah, swear too much. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said you come into rugby late. What heroes have you got within? Have you got like rugby heroes? Have you got football heroes? I probably got football heroes. I've probably got football heroes. I've probably got uh, me, me, me football hero, and you, you probably won't like this. It's, I'm, I'm, I was, I was in love with Ian Wright. I loved Ian Wright. I thought yeah. Ian Wright was one of the one of the best players ever. Been, just because he scored goals, and he didn't give a fuck. If yeah, you know yeah. what I mean, he just didn't, had that chip on his shoulder, and that was it. And that was yeah. that was my. I was like, that's it. I like that. I like that. Just stand there. Stand there like that. Score a goal. That's it. That's all you got to do. Well, he used to get fucking. Uh, yeah, he used to get absolutely buried in right when we used to play against them. Like in the early nineties, we we come up against him a few times in the FA Cup, and I think he tried to stamp on Casey Keller, and they was all having a bit. But then a few years ago, we yeah. played Leicester in the FA Cup, and he was doing the commentary when he and right, and he said, I, "I grew up a Millwall fan, so now a lot of Millwall fans love him." Yeah, now. That's, that's it. Yeah, I knew, I, well, I, knew, I knew he was a Millwall fan for years because he was raised just, just down the road, wasn't he? So yeah, he I knew he was a Millwall fan. Yeah, but I just loved loved it just that he. He didn't care. He loved it, and uh, yeah, it's just he just put it out there. Didn't matter. He'd probably get his head knocked off, but he was like, "Yeah, I'll have it. Let's go." Right like, there, yeah. he was like him. Obviously, Tim Cahill. Tim Cahill was probably one of one of the ones for Millwall because he was just like that was it. But luckily enough, uh, I played against probably one of his cousins called Hep Cahill. So it was I've, I've met Hep, so he, he looks exactly like him. I was only young, and I, like, I remember playing against him, going Hep Cahill, and then I spoke to one of our our um, uh, Samoan boys. I was going, yeah, Ed Kale, eh? He goes, oh, yeah, I think, he's, I think his cousin's with Tim Kale. And I was like, you know what I mean? Like that. But he was at Everton. And then I was like, I wonder if I could ask him to get me a shirt. Like, you know what I mean? You go, <laughs> ask, ask him to get me a shirt. But I obviously, I didn't have the balls to go up to him. Go, mm. hey, can, I, uh, get, can you get me one of your cousin's shirts? <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. So you've been up there a long time now. After you finished playing, you said, you know, your boy sports man sitting now, so that's fucked. Your kids' accents yeah. are starting to turn. After you finish rugby, 
because you're oh, just speaking to you, you're such a London boy still, even though you've been out in Merseyside for a long time. Where do, what do you think? Where do you think you'll you'll lie, or do you not want to say after rugby? Do you think you'll come back down here, or do you think oh, you'll stay there? Is that a difficult? Probably well, the wife, the wife's, the wife's London as well. She's South London, so it's uh, it's it's looking like we'll probably end up staying up here just for the life that we've got up here. And if I yeah. know I'm moving down south, I've got. I've got three boys and one girl, and I can't imagine me moving down south and trying to patrol them. <laughs> <laughs> trying to look up there. So I'm thinking, uh, if I stay up here, you got yeah, twins as well, you? I know a little bit of like, uh, Yeah, I've got, got twins. twins. Yeah, I've got, so I've got two boys who are at school, and I've got uh, twins that have just gone to bed. They were screaming down the house about 10 minutes ago, but they're, they're in bed now, having a, having a nap, just, just shy of two. So, yeah. So yeah, so it pro- probably looks like we'll end up staying up here. It's just, it's an easy life, and I'm surrounded by green fields and sheep and everything like that. So it's it's, it's totally different from what I got grew up with, with <laughs> council flats, and it's mental. So I'm just doing that. <laughs> oh dear. Um. So obviously, this massive great career you've had, the one sacrifice you've, in my mind as well, maybe you don't think the same. You obviously not seen a lot of Millwall. Do you have to drop things? No, out? yeah. Yeah, well, I think the last time I got down to the den is I took, uh, like, uh, like I told you before, took, took my boy to his first game. So he was always, he's always asking me, going, can I go to Man City? Can I go and watch Man City? Can I go and watch Man City? And I was like, I was like, yeah, you can go and watch Man City, but you've got to go and watch Millwall first. So I have to say that I've took you to your first game. So I got me, my brother-in-law, Danny Tucker, to, to get us some tickets. And I think we were off in uh, school half term. Uh, and we were like, right, let's go, let's let's go. We'll go down there. We'll go, we'll go and watch him. So they're playing um, Ipswich. I remember that, and I remember the score because I was like, yes, I've got him, I've got him on here. So they won three 0 and I was buzzing. I was like, do you enjoy yourself? He was like, yeah. I was like, I got, I got him, uh, I got him the the orange away kit. It was a nice like orange kit. He wanted the orange, didn't want the blue. Wanted the orange. So I got him the away kit. I went, all right, get your brother one. I got got them, got him home. He was like, yeah, mum, it was great, it was great. So, Learned words, sweaty, told them all the swear words and learned and everything like that. It's fantastic. So there you go. So I got a rollicking for that. And then uh, and then he was like, oh, yeah, so no, now we can go and watch Man City. So I'm like, all right, yeah, we're going to watch Man City. So luckily enough, I know someone at uh, the City Grand. So I've got some tickets here. Took his mate as well, who's a Man City fan. This is why. This is where it went wrong. So mm. took him there to Man City. They're playing Watford. Oh. Uh, so I'm like, all right, here we go. We'll watch this. Watch this. And I thought, oh, I've got him. 3-0, he'll always be a Millwall fan. That was great. We saw a good goal. A couple of good goals. They were up this at the end we, had, we, we were in. So I took him to took him City. Uh, they were 3-0 up after 25 minutes and they ended up winning 8-0. So, right, I think I've lost you, son. <laughs> <laughs> he was on the chair. He's top off. He's top off, wailing it around. Thinking oh. Oh, and he was, yeah. And he learned some songs and he was singing it on the train back. He was FaceTiming my, my mum and my dad and... Yeah, I went, oh, I've lost you now. And I went, you still like Millwall? We went, no, David, Man City, oh, isn't it? Man City, 8 0. They won 8 0. It's right. And it's up the road yeah. and all, isn't it? He probably had a great time. Oh, no, like, when you're a kid, no, three hours on the train feels like about nine days, doesn't it? When you're a kid as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I gave him everything that day as well at the Millwall ground. Give him sweets, give him everything. It was like, you'll love it. Here, have this, have this, have this. <laughs> Oh, well, fucking no, sending no. that. I'm sending that orange away strip back now. And if you ain't, don't, you, that's going back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not allowed to keep that. <laughs> oh, dear. Right. <laughs> so, I always end with, with certain questions for players, um, which obviously would be difficult for you to answer because you wasn't a meal player. So, I've, I've thought of a new one for this little series, and it's a, it's a difficult one. You might not want to answer it. You've had a great career. You love, I mean, I could tell you, you love the club, you love, love your surroundings. But if you could go back in time to 16 years old and trial for Millwall instead of London Broncos and have a 10-year playing career for Millwall, instead of being a rugby player, would you take it? <laughs> Tough, isn't it? Like, no. It's not answer, years, I'll cut it out. In that, now, in that 10 years, we got promoted, didn't we? So we got two promotions, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. From League One Championship, didn't we? So I could say I've won things. So yeah, I but I'm, I'm I've always wanted to be a footballer, but I like I said, yeah, I was shit. So that's like, <laughs> like if I could, yeah. Oh, I'd love, yeah, that'd be. God class. can give you the that power and switch your career from being a very successful rugby player to looking back now and we're looking back on a ten-year meal career instead. With the same success, 
with the same success. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, it's Bill Wall, isn't it? It's Bill Wall. It's, it's football. It's football. And I know sitting here, my body, my body, my body won't be hurting as much as it is now. <laughs> <laughs> you want to, do you want to apologise to any St. Ellen's fans that might be watching before you? Oh, no, they'll know. They'll know. They'll know. Because they know I love Millwall. So, but yeah. But no, it's, it's, a, it's a time machine that would never happen. So luckily enough, I had a great career with Saints. So yeah. Well said, so, mate. Well said. Listen, mate, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. Really enjoyed Thank it. Thank you very much. Thank Top you man. Man. Cheers, mate. Nice one. See you later, love.